I wanted to have another attempt at making a planet-type object where I carved the relief into the surface of a sphere. I did this recently with the moon, and the technique I used was to make a dodecahedron, which is a 12-sided object made up of pentagons. And I can cut each of those pentagons on the CNC as a three-dimensional surface on a two-dimensional shape, then glue all of those pentagons together to make the sphere. With the moon project, I used poplar, and I was thinking about that again, and then I thought I should use something a little darker and a little redder. I found a nice piece of cherry. I can cut that piece in half, as I'm going to cut this into small pentagons in the end, so I really don't need any long pieces. It's easier to plane and joint if it's cut in half. There's not as much cupping and twisting of the wood when it's shorter. Once I have the pieces in half, I can joint and plane each of those pieces. At first, I didn't think I needed really flat faces for the pentagons I was making, but in reality, it would help if those faces were flat and parallel, as they'll, they'll sit flat on the jig that I'm gonna make for the CNC machine. Before I bring the piece of wood over, I've been sent a new dust collection shoe from Kenneth Moreland at One Guy in a Shop. And he makes all kinds of different dust collection parts for CNC machines. Hopefully this will work better than my Jerry Rig Together version that I've had for years. So I took off my setup, which is just bolted together. So it's easy to come off and I can put the new dust boot on. It slides over the spindle and clamps to the round part of the spindle. And it supposedly also works with the laser that I don't have on at the moment because I've been doing all this 3D stuff. It went on really easily and the brush snaps into place with magnets. And it comes on and off really easily, which is nice because half the time I don't have the brush on because I want to see what's going on. I decided to take the part that holds the hose off. Now a piece had come with the dust boot that I wasn't sure what it was, but I realized after I finished the project how it worked and how it goes on and it's meant to hold the hose. <laughs> so the hose isn't just wobbling around quite so much. So once I have that on, I can bring the first piece of cherry over. And what I want to do is cut a pentagon-shaped mortise and tenon into each of the pentagons that I'm going to make for each of the sides of the sphere. I can cut the mortise part of the mortise and tenon into the piece of cherry. And I'll do a rough pass first, and then I can do a finishing pass to get the size just right. As this will have to fit with the tenon just perfectly so it holds the pentagon in the right location. And once I have the mortises cut, I can cut out each of the pentagons from the cherry. This is a little bit different from the way I did the moon. With the moon project, I cut all of the surfaces into each pentagon before I separated them from the bigger piece of wood. You can see the dust collection boot is even getting the chips out of the cut, which is really nice. And I labeled the pentagons at this point. They don't really matter now which ones they are, but they will in the end, so I labeled them at this point. Then I can cut each of the pentagons free. It's a little easier to not cut them all the way through with the CNC machine as I can pack them in tighter on the bigger piece of wood. And more importantly, I don't have a quarter inch bit that'll cut the entire two inches of depth of the cherry. The next thing to make were some tabs to glue to the outside of the pentagons. The depth of the cut that I made to cut out the pentagons only needs to be as deep as the thickness of these tabs that I'm making. And really they're just squares of pine. <laughs> I cut the pine into strips to begin with, then I cut them into squares. And I 
marked where the tabs would be glued on. And it's not too important, I just wanted to have a point so I knew where to put glue. The way I clamp these was to have five tabs around the pentagon, one on each side, but only three of them would have glue. I only did three because I thought that's all I really needed to hold these in place on the CNC. Also, it would give my pentagon with the tabs a direction. So I would be able to orient them back onto the jig in the same way. So these are all 12. I made 14 just so I'd have some extra, which I didn't end up needing in the end. I need to make the tenon part of the jig. So I found a little scrap piece of hardwood that I made a square out of. And I glued that to a piece of half inch plywood. And this will become the jig for the project. And this is really the most important part of this project. So I'm gonna attach this to the CNC table. I made one of these right when I started the project and then I took it off and then I realized, no, it has to stay in place because I have to cut the pentagons for the project based on the center of this jig. And I don't know where that is once I take it off. So I screwed this one down to the table and then cut the tenon into this piece with a roughing pass and then a finishing pass. And I made some spacers that you'll see what these are for in a second. They're for the hold downs because the hold downs now have to hold down something on top of a half inch piece of plywood. I made some half inch spacers and I can do the roughing pass for each of the pentagons. I made a sort of a loop that goes around the outside that'll just remove a bunch of material and you can see how the hold downs work now. Then once that outer mass of material is removed, I can do the inside section with something that's more of the shape of the final surface of the globe. So really at this point, I've just removed the bulk of the material and it's starting to have a, a little bit of a sphere shape to it or a curve, I guess. The dust boot with the brush worked fairly well on the three-dimensional shape but it didn't quite get every bit of sawdust. I made 12 of these that look similar. Then I can put them back on the jig so having the jig allowed me to do all 12 with one bit in the spindle, which was a 3 8 inch flat bit. Then I could come back and put the pieces back in place and do a 3D carving bit, which is an 8 inch ball nose bit. So this is where having the tabs have a direction was helpful in that I could get the piece back in the right orientation so the, the different mountains and craters all lined up with the two passes. It was just a matter of doing this 12 times now. I think each one of these finishing passes was taking a little more than 17 minutes. With these, I was trying to take a photo every time the spindle came around to one side on the piece. And it kind of makes it feel like it's carving the surface away. took a Martian sample. <laughs> what I want to do now is cut this tenon piece free. I had to move my metal screws a little bit. And this will allow me to take this piece over to the table saw jig. And this is why this is so important to this project. I can carry the precision from the CNC machine over to the table saw. I can get this piece cleaned up. And 
with some modification, this will fit with the jig on the table saw. And it doesn't quite fit at the moment. <laughs> but I can move some pieces around. I ended up having to add a hole to this upper piece that holds the clamp. Before I go any further, I cut off all the tabs on the pentagons as I won't need these on the table saw and they're in the way. I don't need to cut them off cleanly as they'll be cut off in the end as I cut off the edges or the sides to each of the pentagons. I can get this in here to where it works. So it's kind of rough at this moment. The hold down clamps aren't quite in the perfect location, but they're good enough to figure out where the pentagons need to be in relation to the blade. I can cut off one edge and I can move the pentagon over to figure out exactly where to cut that edge. I'm kind of doing this by eye at this point. I want to cut off just enough to where I get the shape that I want, but not so much that I start to lose some of the terrain on the sphere. And once I have the location set, I can screw the jig down to the table saw jig. And this will hold it in place while I cut all of the edges. And I wanted to move this hold down, so it helped to get it out of the way. And I can screw the jig down, and now it's locked into place. And you can see how each of the pentagons will sit on that mortise and tenon now. I move this hold down just slightly, and I move the other hold down a little bit. Don't need this stop piece anymore as the jig is screwed into place. The key here is to be able to do this quickly, as I've got 12 pentagons with five sides, so I've got 60 edges to cut. Once everything was set up, it went really quickly. What I didn't realize is I had set my first cut where the terrain was low, I think, on the Martian sphere. So it made a, a clean edge, whereas where the terrain is higher, it didn't quite cut at the center. And I ended up with a little extra piece. But it looks bigger than it is. Where it's actually connecting to the sphere, it's very thin. I found a little saw attachment for my Fairchild grinder, and I could use that to clean up those cuts. Then I wanted to add a biscuit at each of the seams. So I found the center on each of the sides of the pentagons, and this will help when I cut the biscuits with the biscuit cutter. And I could just do that by hand, just holding the cutter in the center and cutting the slot for the biscuits. I found when doing the moon, this was really the only way to hold all the pieces together, was to have the biscuits at the joints. It's time to put everything together, and I wrapped a map of the dodecahedron with the numbered pentagons, so I could see where each numbered pentagon went. <laughs> and in using that, I can put the pieces together. It's a little bit like putting a puzzle together with a little bit of help from the numbers. As the pieces go together, I, I can see that the terrain lines up and makes sense. And with the moon project, I sort of chickened out and didn't glue the final piece together because I wasn't quite sure how to do that. And in thinking about this one, I really wanted to just take the step and glue and finish this piece. And what I decided was that this wasn't a piece of cabinetry or a piece of furniture where I needed to get glue into the biscuits and really kind of drench everything in glue. I could just open up the seams a little bit and put a small dab of glue into each one of those seams. And that should be enough to just hold the sphere together. So that's what I tried. And then I took an attempt at clamping everything <laughs> on a sphere. And it went together mostly well, but there are still a few gaps here and there. And I still think there's, there must be a better method for doing this. And I haven't quite figured out what that is. I still had a little bit of extra on some of the seams. So I got a little ball grinder 
that I could use to clean up the seams a little bit. It's definitely better than the seams I had on the moon. With the moon, I had to reference the edges of the pentagons on the table saw jig, which left me with a lot of extra material and very wide seams between the pentagons. And with this one, I used the center mortise that did help significantly with being able to make the seams between the pentagons go away. But I think the problem I'm having now is getting it to glue together well. I ended up putting a little filler in between some of the gaps. And it isn't like a sphere where I can sand it smooth. I have to sand it around all the little bumps in the terrain. So it kind of worked. It's much, much better than the moon project, but there's still a ways to go. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and I put finish on. And again, because of the surface, I can't rub it on with a cloth. So I found a brush I could use. And that worked a little better because I've got to get the finish into all of the roughness of the surface. I also think it would have been nice to have exaggerated the height a little more. As most of the sphere, it's subtle, and then where the mountains are, they're really tall. So I think maybe doing something where I exaggerated everything except the mountains more <laughs> would have been helpful. I love this idea of making a three-dimensional object out of sort of semi-two-dimensional objects with the CNC machine. I need to do some more thinking on this. I'll put a link to the moon project here at the end. That also explains the mapping and the development of how to make the three-dimensional surface on the pentagons that was used in this project. Thanks for watching.